Hello, and welcome to Question in a Bottle. In this series of short discussions, private investor Mark Atkinson answers questions sent in by listeners and subscribers to his main podcast, The Desert Island Investor. So, let's take a look and see what's in the bottle that washed up on the beach today. Going back a few episodes, Paul and I remarked uh, that we'd yet to hear from a single female investor. So we put out an appeal. Well, I'm glad to say that this has been met by Rosie Golfer, who submitted a question. How do I buy shares for my grandchildren? Right. Well, firstly, some ground rules. I'm not a qualified, keyword, independent financial advisor. I'm not an independent financial advisor of any kind, but simply a private investor. Uh, We have a disclaimer, and that's for good reason, and this should be heeded. Nevertheless, I can give some broad personal thoughts on this topic before seeking professional advice. I wouldn't attempt to give advice, uh, but even if I did, I would require greater depth of information than what is contained in an eight-word question. An IFA will do a thorough investigation of your circumstances and uh, what you are looking to achieve. We don't even know, Rosie, if you're based in the UK. Uh, We don't know the age of your grandchildren. Are they babes in arms? Uh, Grandchildren can be adults. What are you looking to achieve for yourself? Uh, What's your attitude to risk? Uh, How much are you looking to invest for them and on what time scale? Uh, Is there a chance that you could erode the resources that you need for yourself? Um, What's your marital status? You could be married or have a partner that's not a a blood relative of your grandchildren. And it can be a minefield. Everybody's circumstances are unique and an IFA should do deep research to obtain a clear picture. Having said that, I think it's commendable uh, to be looking to give your grandchildren a start. I started investing by the stock market when I was 18. Uh, the gateway to that was having a, a building society deposit account uh, with the long gone Overdown Building Society, which had, I remember it having a, a, a yellow passbook. And I remember having my interest manually added annually and thinking, uh, this is better than leaving it in a, in a, in a piggy bank. I'm gaining interest uh, while I'm sleeping. This is what we call passive income. But it was investing in businesses that has really been the game changer for me. The course of my life would have been very much different. I, I retired at 53, but I'm sure I'd still be working in, instead of wintering abroad, pursuing my many interests and enjoying the, the everyday freedoms that, that, that come with financial independence. So I retired at 53, and in hindsight, I should have, have gone earlier, but there are many unknowns like, not knowing what your cash burn is going to be. Now I have the advantage of being time rich, and this was down to investing early and having 35 years of compounding. Yet you could argue that I missed out on the first 18 years. What a difference, what difference would it have been if some modest investment had been made whilst I was still in Bull Hill Maternity Hospital. Now for where I'm sitting, Uh, It's not altogether straightforward buying shares for grandchildren. I I understand that you can invest £9,000 into a a stocks and shares ISA uh, per annum, for example. That's a junior ISA. And over 18 years, that's £162,000. That's a tidy sum. Of course, that could go up or, or it could go down. Now, the problem is it has to be opened by somebody with parental responsibility, not a grandparent, uh, unless they are a guardian. So you could pass the money across to your son or daughter for them to invest in, say, the ISA, but not casting any aspersions, but there could be circumstances where that money, once parted with, doesn't reach the intended destination. It could be very tempting to book that holiday, or that it reaches the destination only to be withdrawn at a later point. So we're in the realms of trust. There again, if you so wish, you could insist upon your support being dependent on seeing regular statements. Uh, then, of course, why are, you in, why are you buying shares for your grandchildren? What, what is the ultimate goal? You may think it's to secure their future, help them during time at university, a, a deposit for a house, etc., or for them just to have fun. Uh, at 18, a child becomes an adult, 
and well, that's perhaps arguable, and would have access to uh, have access to in, independently to those funds. Uh, would they be mature enough to handle a significant windfall overnight? Their priorities at 18 may be much different for those you envisaged, and it, it, it just could be party party. In general, young people are more reckless and risk taking, and that's I would argue that's why car insurance is is much higher for an 18 year old than a 25 year old. And there is that saying, which is a great truism, uh, easy come, easy go. Another consideration is asset class. I, I started reading the financial pages as a teenager. Other boys were learning to, to, to play the guitar or, or stripping motorbikes. So I freely admit this was a peculiar interest, especially for somebody with no investments. Um, if an 18-year-old suddenly is presented with a shirt portfolio, will they have the the capability or appetite to understand and manage it. Rather than individual shares, would funds or trackers be more suitable where the money is managed on their behalf and often smooths out the extreme value, uh, valuation fluctuations, both up and down? I suppose another option uh, would be for you to invest directly yourself in your own name, but, but to ring fence these investments for your grandchildren after your passing. You could leave specific instructions in your will about these bypassing your own grandchildren or any other beneficiaries. However, in this scenario, these assets remain part of your estate and could be liable to inheritance tax. Or in the event that you need to go in a home one day, these resources may be needed to, to, be, to, to, to be turned in, 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 in order to, uh, to pay your care fees. You cannot then give your money away uh, prior to going to a home, for example, as this is deemed deprivation of assets. So you, you could foul, fall foul here. Now, another option, uh, which sounds uh, very grand, is setting up a trust whereby the assets pass out of your estate. But should you wish to become a, a trustee, uh, you need a minimum of two trustees to oversee the trust. And, and they must uh, always be in, a, in, in agreement. You can name your grandchildren as the beneficiaries and under this mechanism, you have the benefit of, of having taken the money out of your estate, but retain a large element of control. Uh, the, the trustees can manage the investments and they can wait for a time when they deem that the beneficiaries are in, in most need or are mature enough to, to make distributions on, a, on an ad hoc basis. However, there are numerous types of trust and an IFA will, will point you in the direction of, of which could best possibly meet your needs. This is a great fear for, for parents and grandparents. They, they wish to help their offspring, but fear that the money that they have scrimped and saved for and, and been thrifty will be blown away during their lifetime. They'll, they'll, they'll see it disappear. For that reason, many people hold on to that money uh, when all that can be achieved is that it's taken away from them through inheritance tax or, or car, car fees, for example. Uh, it really can be a dilemma of what to do for the best. So my message to private investors is that uh, in investing really, it's a niche interest. And unfortunately, most people are not wired like us. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of instant gratification, perhaps, that's part of the appeal of, of Bitcoin, of which I remain unconvinced. It's gone up very quickly. It's new, it's shiny, and it's exciting. Uh, if you were to say to an average 18-year-old, start investing at 18, and, and, and in 35 years' time, you can retire, you, you probably wouldn't have done a really good sales job. That's not exciting enough. So we, we often fall into the trap of thinking that our, cha our children and grandchildren will have the, our DNA and the same mindset. Um, but they may be constructing it in a totally different manner. This is partly why I have seen so many second and third generation businesses flounder. So, Rosie, briefly, I hope that offers a little food for thought, but I will finish just as I started and say my advice is never to take my advice, and the best course of action um, where you will get some recourse is to discuss your affairs with an, a, a, an independent financial advisor uh, who will hopefully suggest your best solution. Well, that's all for this episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. Please remember the content is for information only and it is not financial advice. If you have a question for Mark for our Question in a Bottle podcast, just complete the form on our website, the Desert Island 
www.cloudcreative.co.uk. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.